The Ferrari Puro Sangue is the first ever four-door, four full-size seater car in Ferrari's history. Built not for racing but for families. Starting from $313,000 and going up to half a million. More expensive than the Rolls-Royce Cullinan. 0 to 60 in 3.3 seconds. 194 miles per hour top speed. This my friend is the quickest luxury SUV on the planet. If you think the Tesla is quicker, let me know in the comments section. Stay with me for the most comprehensive review in the whole internet. It's in the middle between a car and a SUV. You can call it a luxury sport SUV as this competes with other luxury SUVs such as Aston Martin X, Lamborghini Urus, Bentley Bentayga and Audi RS Q8. Moving on to the name. Puro Sangue, a name that translates from Italian literally as thoroughbred. The thoroughbred is a horse breed developed for horse racing. Okay, let's start our deep dive starting from the performance department. Under this glorious front hinged bonnet resides the front mid mounted naturally aspirated 6.5 liter V12 engine with 8 speed dual clutch transmission with 4 RMS Evo 4 wheel drive. Its rear-wheel biased all-wheel drive 725 PS or 715 horsepower. PSAKA Ferd Stark, a German word that translates to horsepower in English. It is a unit of power commonly used to measure the output power of engines in cars and other vehicles. In most of Europe, including Germany, PS is the standard unit. While in other countries like the United States, Horsepower is the more commonly used unit. 1 PS is the equivalent of 98.6% of 1 horsepower. Ferrari Puro Sangue comes with 716 newton meters of torque at 6,250 revolutions per minute and 8,250 max revs. 0 to 60 in 3.3 seconds and 194 miles per hour top speed. Fuel consumption is about 17.3 liters per 100 kilometers and the fuel tank is 100 liters. Weight distribution is about 51% in the rear and 49% in the front. Drive experience is smooth and joyful with the naturally aspirated engine. Exterior. Starting from the front, the trunk is not too long, engine is placed behind the front axle. Not exactly a front-mounted engine vehicle more like front mid-mounted engine placement. There is a horizontal line wrapping around the front containing the parking sensor and 360 cameras. Mesh grille made out of carbon fiber. Air goes in below and over the headlight, through the engine and out. There is an uncommon air vent near the A-pillar. Every vent and ducts you see on the exterior are functional and real. These are there for a purpose not just style elements. Air being ejected from the engine drafted out of the bonnet shot down the side of the car. There is no downforce claim for this car. Ferrari hasn't quoted one. Body is mostly aluminium there is some carbon fiber, like the standard carbon fiber roof this car has the optional sunroof as well. Let's move on to the sides. As you'll see there's ducting around the wheel arches. 22-inch wheels for the front and 23-inch wheels for the back are surrounded by carbon fiber wheel arches. Of course, the carbon fiber is optional. It separates the body from the driving elements. This comes with clever suspension, side-slip angle control and carbon fiber ceramic brakes. The car is constantly learning how much grip there is at each tire. Adaptive suspension with no anti-roll bars. Instead, there's an electric motor on the top of each shock absorber and that spins to counteract body roll and pitch. So Ferrari insists that its tallest car ever can still corner flat and level. On the side, there is a big styling line. Ferrari calls this aerobridge theme. This creates a dihedral shape which ends in the imposing rear muscle. Rear muscles dive into the tail where a horizontal cut line incorporates the slim tail lights with turn lights at the tip. There are two vents below the tail lights. On the bottom we have the carbon fiber diffuser between those four exhaust pipes. However, there is no tow bar. Overall the large rear wings add more width to the car. 
spoiler is placed towards the end of the roof. Roof is carbon fiber standard. On the rear window, there are two creases. And notice there is no rear wiper. With aerodynamics, they say it has such a strong wind effect that it cleans the rear glass. Let's peek into the boot. It's a 473 liter boot, 40 inches wide, 30 inches length and 24 inches tall. Boot space is not massive but it's plenty. Under there we have an additional storage compartment. Then there are buttons to fold the back row. If you fold the seats you can extend the boot up to 67 inches. Length, 4.973 meters. Width, 2.028 meters. Height, 1.589 meters. Weight, 2033 kilogram. Fuel tank, 100 liters. Ground clearance, 21.5 centimeters. Wheelbase, 3.018 meters. Front track width, 1.737 meters. Rear track width, 1.720 meters. Weight distribution, 49% front and 51% rear. Let's get inside. We have the motorized rear doors hinged from the back. But the front doors are not automatic. However, they are soft close, frameless with dual insulation glass. Engine start button is on the steering wheel. That button is not physical. There is a huge curved digital display behind the steering wheel with a new presentation. Menus on either side are controlled by the worked haptic feedback touch sensitive buttons which live on the steering wheel. Steering wheel controls include indicators, wiper controls and the headlights. Most people complain these controls are very difficult to use while driving. To help that, Ferrari has given indentations on the button. Then there are the gear shift paddles behind. Manatino dial holds the power to change the modes. There is ice mode, wet mode, comfort, sport and you can switch off the electronic stability control. There is a button to change the suspension from soft, medium and hard. In the center, on the panel between the passenger and the driver, you have the climate controls with this pop-up dial that comes out of the panel with a dial to twist and adjust the fan speed, temperature, seat controls, etc. You have the same mechanism in the back for the rear seats as well. On the lower middle console there is a wireless charging pad and cup holders. Then there is a gearbox setting to change between automatic and manual. If you select the launch control, the car lowers. Window controls are alongside there, not on the steering wheel. Under the hand rest, a storage compartment and some USB ports. This car doesn't have built-in navigation. You can use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay wireless. Once connected it pops up on the driver's display. But it's not super nice but alright I guess. Once connected you can button on the steering wheel to switch between the nav and the dials. There is also a small head-up display and 21-speaker Burmester sound system. No middle screen but there is that front passenger 10.5-inch infotainment system with sat-nav, aircon seat control settings. It mirrors the driver's controls as well as you can have your own controls too. As this is a family car that is nice to have, front seats are a bit low and sportier than luxurious. Let's hop into the second row. Those are bucket seats. Front seats and back seats are Alcantara optional. Ferrari is also working on a completely animal-free interior, but it is not possible yet. There is no third seat, only two at the back. You cannot have a fifth seat. You have the switch to close the door on the B pillar. There is plenty of knee room and headroom for the second row. But if you are over six feet two, it starts to get a bit tight. Heavily tinted glass makes the second row a bit darker. Between two seats there is that pop-up dial like we had in the front for adjusting heated seats and air conditioning. 
Then there are cup holders. So what do you think about Ferrari Purosange? Let me know in the comments section. Let me end the video with why Ferrari now bringing a SUV not 10 years before when everyone was going in the SUV direction. Ferrari says they don't follow trends and they don't bring to the market what the market is demanding. They bring to the market what they think at this moment is the best choice and what they can do on a technological level. Subscribe for more videos like this and see you in the next one.